Hello. Today we're continuing with our GCSE Physics Revision series looking at use of radiation and radiation safety. As we recall from last video, we need to treat all radioactive material with safety. All of these rays that are given out by decaying atoms can penetrate um, into bodies. Uh, they will penetrate to different degrees, but they all can penetrate to some extent. And when they do, they ionize, they affect the cells by kicking electrons off. And this can lead to mutations of cells, which in some cases can lead to cancer. And if the radiation is strong enough, you can actually kill the cells completely. In a very low dose, there may only be a very minor effect. But if you have a large dose, then you could be in for a major problem. You might get radiation sickness, and it can in some extreme circumstances, of course, lead to death. The damage that will be done is largely proportional to the extent of the exposure. The more you are exposed to this radiation, the more likely there will be damage. And that will be affected by the energy of the particles, the higher the energy, the higher the, de the damage, and the penetration. You may remember that alpha particles hardly penetrate at all, beta particles much more so, and gamma rays extensively. So outside the body, gamma and beta radiation is the most dangerous because that can penetrate most easily into your body. Alpha radiation will probably be stopped by your skin, but it still means it will do damage to your skin. The gamma and beta rays, however, will penetrate further. But inside your body, the most dangerous is alpha particles because they can't get out. They will be absorbed within the first millimeter of whatever um, cells they encounter. So all the energy of alpha particles, if they're inside your body, will do you a lot of damage. So there will be a local area effect around the alpha source, uh, wherever the alpha rays are coming from. In that immediate area, um, all those uh, alpha rays will be absorbed and will cause damage. So you need to take precautions when you use radioactive material. Handle them carefully. For as short a time as possible, and never have any skin contact. Always make sure you use something like tongs. Hold them at arm's length so that the uh, radiation um, is furthest away from the rest of your body. If there is a source, you must point it away from you so that it's not pointing the rays in your direction. And ideally, put the uh, radiation in a lead container because remember, lead will certainly stop alpha and beta particles, and if it's thick enough, thick enough, it will largely contain gamma rays. You should also wear a lead apron, which is heavy, but worthwhile, and sometimes you'll need to stand behind a lead screen. Depending on your profession, you may be exposed to a greater dose of radiation, and that will depend on the type and the amount that you get. And that, as I've said, is determined by the location in, you, in which you work and also the occupation. For example, granite is well known to have radon gas associated with it. Radon gas or radon atoms are unstable. They will decay, emitting radiation. In the nuclear industry, obviously, there is nuclear material. Nuclear material is unstable isotopes which decay, giving off radiation. So people working in the nuclear industry need to wear protect protective clothes. They wear um, photographic badges. And if radiation strikes those badges, it leaves a mark rather like light striking a photographic plate. The badges are developed every so often to see if people have been exposed to more than a safe level of radiation. And if they have, they have to be withdrawn from the front line of the nuclear industry for a certain time. Radiographers 
the people who take x-rays in hospitals, but they also um, will be responsible for some forms of gamma treatment. They have to take particular care. You'll often see them wearing lead aprons, behind screens, or they may even go outside the room when they're using the actual radiation. Jet pilots are exposed to more radiation because they're flying at high altitudes where there will be more cosmic rays and more gamma rays, gamma rays emitted by the sun. The upper atmosphere usually absorbs these so that by the time we get to ground level, uh, they are safe levels. But at high altitude, the atmosphere has not yet absorbed them all. So jet pilots are more at risk. Miners working underground will be working amongst rocks and rocks are a notorious source of radioactive material. Of course, there are constructive uses of this radiation. One of the main one is in medicinal work. Radiotherapy. A high dose of gamma radiation will kill cancer cells. The problem is, of course, it will also kill any ordinary cells with which it comes into contact. So the first thing you want to do is to locate precisely where the tumour is in the body so that you can focus your gamma radiation on it. This is usually achieved by injecting some kind of radioactive material like technetium. The gamma rays will build up in the cancer and you can then detect those with a gamma camera so that you locate precisely where the tumour is. And that means you can direct the source of your gamma radiation onto the tumour. A good source is something like cobalt-60. You need the right dosage, which is calculated in the hospital. And you have to recognise that some other cells, ordinary cells, will be damaged. So you want to minimise the extent to which this happens. And that means that you put the body onto a table and then you have the gamma source going round, focused on the tumour. Now you'll notice that although the rays will pass through the body as well, or they pass through different bits of the body as the camera, ga camera, as the camera swings round, but in all cases, the gamma source is focused on the tumour that you want to kill. So you maximise the cancer exposure, but you minimise the remainder. Radiation can also be used as tracers. For this, you need to use gamma or beta radiation. We'll explain why in a moment. And you need a short half-life, a few hours. Half-life will come to later, but basically it's the length of time before half of the material has disappeared. So if you don't want radioactive material to be hanging around for a long time, you need a very short half-life. The material is injected into you. You may even drink it or you can eat it, depending on what bit of the body the doctor wants to examine. The uh, injected radioactive material will spread through your body and it will be monitored outside. Now, here's the reason you have to use gamma or beta radiation, because remember, alpha radiation has very small penetration. It can be stopped by a piece of paper. So if there was an alpha source inside you, the alpha rays would never get out and you wouldn't be able to detect them. That's why we have to use gamma and beta. So for example, the thyroid gland absorbs iodine and there is a radioactive form of iodine and what you do is you inject that into a person and then you look to see if the thyroid is absorbing that iodine. If it does, there will be a buildup of radioactive iodine in the thyroid and you'll be able to detect that with your detector outside the body. Obviously, as I've said, you can't use an alpha source because that would be dangerous and you wouldn't be able to detect it anyway. Radiation is also used in the process of sterilization. For example, of medical equipment. If you use a high dose of gamma radiation, it will kill all the little microbes the little uh, things that could otherwise cause disease. And that's better than boiling because 
If you've got very delicate equipment, particularly if it's things like thermometers, you don't want to be putting those in boiling water. So much better that you kill off any um, harmful cells with a high dose of gamma radiation. Radiation can also be used in the industrial world. Again, tracers can be used to detect leaks. Suppose you have a pipe and you inject some kind of radiating material. It can't be alpha because again, you would never be able to detect it because the alpha radiation would never come through the pipe. It would be absorbed. If the activity stops, so you're measuring the gamma or beta radiation as it flows along the pipe. If it suddenly stops, that means it's probably leaked out. So you've got a leak or a failure of your pipe. As I said, it has to be gamma or beta because you've got a monitor outside. You need to use a short half-life piece of radiation because you don't want any long-term effects. You don't want to leave radioactive material still decaying inside the pipe. Radiation can be used in foods. Gamma rays can be used, and that helps to prolong the life of the food by killing off all the little microbes, the microorganisms that would otherwise cause the food to go off. It kills them. And the great thing about this is that the food is not radioactive afterwards because you never put any radioactive material near the foods. It's only the radiation that goes through the foods. And by and large, the radiation does not leave things radioactive. That means it's safe to eat. You don't need to worry about food that has been irradiated because it's the radiation, not the radioactive material that has been put near the food. For this, you need a longer half-life because as I've said, it's not the radiation, it's sorry, it's not the radioactive material you're using, it's the radiation. So you don't want to have to keep changing the source because that's dangerous for the person who has to do that. So if you use something with a longer half-life, it continues to work for a long period. It reduces the frequency of replacement and the rays go through the food, not the radioactive material. Continuing the industrial use of radiation, radiation can be used to check for paper thickness. Suppose you have a machine that is manufacturing paper in a long roll. If you have a beta source and a beta detector, you can measure the amount of beta radiation that is penetrating the paper. Now remember that uh, beta radiation will go through paper, alpha wouldn't, but beta will, but it will be attenuated to a certain amount. In other words, it will be reduced by a certain amount. And you monitor by how much. If there is too much radiation coming through, that means the paper is too thin. It hasn't absorbed enough of the radiation. If too little comes through, that means the paper is too thick. It's absorbing too much of it. So that gives you an idea of how to keep the paper at the correct thickness. Radiation is also used, sorry, radioactive material is used in smoke detectors in your home. On this occasion, a very small alpha source is used and it's well protected, but nonetheless, if you're fitting a smoke detector, it's worthwhile taking care and make sure that you never open up the important bit in the middle, which contains the alpha source. So this is the way it works. You have, um, two plates which are positively and negatively charged so they are simply connected to the battery in the smoke detector and because there is uh, an alpha source close by that alpha source is ionizing so the air will be ionized into positive and negative ions we said that ionized means it kicks electrons out of the atoms of air and it therefore leaves the, the electrons, which are negatively charged, and positively charged ions, which are the atoms with one electron missing. And where you have ionized material like this, the current can actually flow across because you've got a supply of free electrons that enable the current to flow. Remember, current flow is indeed the flow of free electron, electrons. 
Normally, no current would flow across a gap that, would, that had air in it. But if you ionize the air, you get free electrons and the current can flow. But if there is smoke in the room, so normally no current flows across the pipe, the plates, but alpha rays ionize the air so the current flows. If there is smoke between those plates, then the alpha rays will be absorbed by the smoke because they do not penetrate. That means there'll be no ionization. That means there'll be no current. So if the current fails, that sets off the alarm. So that tells you that there's smoke in the detector. You can also use radiation to test um, in the airline industry, turbine blades. You want to know if there are any cracks in a turbine blade. These are the turbines that turn the jet engines. It's a good idea to find faults on the ground rather than when the aeroplane is in the air. So again, you use a gamma source. If there is too much radiation coming through the turbine, that suggests that there's a crack or a failure and you can therefore repair the turbine or replace it um, rather than wait until it fails when the aeroplane is in the air.